Hey everyone, it's Saturday the 2nd of November and it's 5 past 10 in the evening and today I've got a bunch of barricade lamps to look at. Um, and they all came from the same friend over on Facebook. He uh, offered some more to me. Well actually he offered one lot to me and then linked me to some that he had listed on eBay and was getting asked silly questions as usual. I usually get that when I put things up on Marketplace. Um, and I just mentioned that I wouldn't mind the, the mini light that was in there, so he said, well, I can do all of them cheap for you if you wanted them, so I did. <laughs> I think it was £15 posted, so basically a tenner for all three. Anywho, we'll have a look at those. Oh, he did include two other free items as well, not barricade lamps, but we'll have a quick look at those. And... As it's a video about lights and things, I've got a flashlight right here, one of these multi-function flashlight torches, whatever you want to call it, that I got from a chair shop, so we'll have a look at that as well. But first, the barricade lamps. So I've got the first ones that arrived as a box of five, and they're all 360 style. There's three silver lines and two tildorns. Um, I haven't got battery in the silver lines at the minute, but I'll just get the Tildorns out of the way. So, I've got this one. It's got gas written on it. And it does work. He says, if I can get it to work. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Some of these are a bit temperamental. It's just me, it's not the lamp. So, nothing to uh, shout home about, but yeah. That's the third one that I've got with gas on. But, it's actually in better condition than the other two. I can just quickly show you them, because I've got them down here. Although this one's not in bad shape, but it has got a different lens on it, I've just noticed. See, this one's got one, two, four, six, eight of these little dimples on the lens. That one has only got four. So there is a difference, at least. But I thought this one was actually in slightly... that's actually embossed on there differently as well. That's not the same. That's like it's been burnt in with a soldering iron or something. That one's more like it's been done with a permanent marker. I did try and get this one to turn on earlier because I didn't realise I'd left the battery in it. Um, but I'm not getting anything out of it at the minute. Sorry, I've got a bit of fluff or something gone in my ear. So, a bit of a flexible body. Is the battery dead? No, but it isn't working. It's not a photosensitive one, is it? I doubt it. In fact, I don't think this is a flashing one. I think this is a steady burn because there's no electronical circuitries in there. No magic pixies. Let's try another battery just in case it is the battery. Not the battery. Ah. The center contact has moved off of that circuit, so I'm guessing that, that could be our problem. Check the bulb on the battery and we'll just try that, shall we? Yep, bulb's good. We've got a good bulb, we've got lots of loose bits up here.
Yeah, that's centre contact, keep moving around, so I've got a feeling it's doing that. And possibly shorten out on the base there with the bulb. I'm not getting anything out of it. Well, that's, that's something I can look at another day. I don't need to look at it right now, do I? But at least I know. And it doesn't matter too much because I've got a whole bunch of these spare in the cupboard anyway, so I'm put another circuit in if necessary. So yeah, we've got a working gas one there. Uh, I think we've got this one. Ooh. I thought the uh, light head was actually on it, but it wasn't. I can't remember if this is the Mark II or the Mark III. Pilot 360 from Tildorn, and I can't remember if I've actually got one in the cupboard or not. I mean, if I do, then the chances are I've only got one of these. And I've got two now. I don't mind having at least two of a lamp. Well, what that was is just the light bouncing off of this and reflecting in the window. Right, drop a battery in. This has got a photo cell on it as well, I believe. He says. serious? There's another one that don't want to work. Seriously, they were, they were all working fine earlier. It could be that battery actually. It is because this one's just, um, this one's working, that one isn't. That one's probably, a, I don't think there's a lot left in it. Will that actually flash faster if I turn the light off? Nope. It is just a slow flashing lamp. Non photo cell, so turning the light off wouldn't have made any difference. Figured it out finally. I could not get it to do this earlier. Okay, so there is actually a right way and a wrong way to do it. Right. Oy. So next up, these are silver line. Now, I've got a matching pair here, and I've already got one of these in the cupboard. That I bought years ago, but I broke that one. But I didn't have one of these with the round base. It's got the same base as the other, um, same light top as the other two, but the other two have got a a Dorman uni lamp style base. You'll see in a minute. doesn't seem to rock that far because this is one um, I can't get to turn off not without the light popping off but I think I'm just putting this lens on wrong I haven't figured out how to do it properly yet but these are LED as well the light output's not bad this has got like a, a shoestring handle on it and the reflective tape is covering up the bolt hole, but it is present. But uh, yeah, for an LED version of a 3.6, it isn't bad. I've seen a heck of a lot worse. Uh, oh, put that there. 
next up we've got, like I said, a matching pair. And the only reason I wanted these is because, like I said, I broke my other one. It's all glued and taped up. Because apparently this plastic is not very strong on these silver lines. And if you drop them with a battery in, you basically smash the whole bottom of your battery compartment. See if we can get. It's off. It's on. Yeah, this is photo cell as well. They all are these silver lines. Turn the light on, the flashing slows. Ah, so you've got to twist it past. The little notch there that allows you to take the top off. Because ah. I thought there was either something wrong with it or I was doing something wrong because I couldn't get it to turn off. I am sure these are two very slightly different coloured battery boxes. And I'm pretty certain that the one I broke has got a much lighter colour yellow as well. But the lenses, these remind me of the Dorman Eco lights. And I'm pretty certain what Silverline did, they just combined the Unilamp body with an Eco light top. Because look, it's even got the, uh, the little current handle on there. You know, and a little slot there to put the nut up for a bolt as well, which is not present on either of them. Right, next three. One of these has actually stopped working. It was working perfectly fine. And that's the uh, Universal Permic lamp. Um, it should be an easy fix, it's just a loose connection in there and I can't find it at the minute. But um, yeah, it was working great, otherwise. Um, but this is an earlier version. The circuit isn't. That's a later circuit, but I'm not bothered about that because it, it's a working, well, was a working lamp. Until a connection decided to become a loose one. We can tell this is an early one because it's got the holes in the battery um, tray. You've got a little clip there that you've got to just lift up to release this. So it'll actually stay in place with the bolt released. Unlike the later versions. Now, sticking with the Pilot 360 theme, there's another one. <laughs> I'm not sure of these. If anybody wants one, I've got like four, at least four spare in the cupboard. Although, I do need a circuit out of one of them for one of these. But, uh, this one has got one main difference. Well, one, it's actually in way better condition than the other normal amber ones I've got. Especially the one that I've got hanging in the hallway at the minute. And two, it's a steady burn. And I am 99% certain that all of the others I've got are flashing. Pretty certain I don't have another steady burn. So I'm pretty pleased to have that. And even if I did have at least one more steady burn, a second one's not going to hurt. They don't seem to be as popular. And the last one, for barricade lamps at least, is another uh, JSP mini light. Um, I say another one because I have got a multitude of these kicking around as well, both here and at the workshop. And I've actually got rid of a bunch as well. <laughs> um, don't buy in bulk, people, unless you are certain you can get rid of them. But this has got FES on it. And it's also got a 
company sticker there. I'm guessing Forest Electrical Services, maybe, um, was using this at one point and stuck, you know, their sticker on it so if it ever went walkie, you know, they could tell. Um, this is like, this is like raised lettering on there, so I don't know how they did that. And, of course, it does work. Um, yeah, anyway, I do like collecting lamps that have a a business name on it, because it's part of history. So, with a lot of the ones I've got, I have tried to keep it to just that, if I have multiples like these. Um, which I think, for the most part, they have got different business names or something like that on them. I mean, I've got two red ones up there. They were both flashing, but just to make a different one, I put a steady burn socket in one circuit, rather, not socket, in one of them. So I've got one steady burn, one flash. Right. I started the video with two batteries on the desk, and now I've got four somehow. That one I don't think is a good one. Those three should be alright. Now, in the box with those last three lamps, which arrived today. He also put in a couple of freebies. So I've got 150 watt double life Osram light bulb. Which will go, in, if I find space for it, will go in my cupboard. And that reminds me, um, trims and things wants me to do a video on my bulb collection. Um, just got a few things I want to sort out around the flat and sort out in the kitchen. Then I'll have the space basically to sit and do a lamp video unless I did it here at the computer desk. But that's boring. I'd rather do it in the kitchen. I've got more room in there. Uh, so yeah, we'll have a look at that. And the other thing he sent me, where is it? Is this little thing. Which uh, he thought was like for a motorbike or something like that, like a little side light. He was close. It is a side light of sorts. It's actually a parking light. Because way back when, a lot of cars, they didn't come, you know, pre-fitted with a parking light. Or with parking lights like most modern cars do. You have your little side light bulbs and your headlights. Um... <clears throat> So, they used to make these. Uh, I know some came with crocodile clips and a long lead, so you just pop your hood and run your cable under there, clip it on the battery. Um, the wires on this one aren't long enough for that, so I'd assume you would probably just connect this to your interior light and turn the interior light on, you know, take the bulb out of the interior light wrap those wires around it. It's very sort of uh, how you're doing back then. But this bit, you'd wind down the driver's side window. You put this on top of the glass. That's why it's all rubbery. It is actually a chunk of rubber. That's why it's got that slot cut into it, so just go over your glass. Wind your window up. I don't know, like I said, you'd probably connect that on an interior light or something like that. And then you've got a little parking light on the side of your car. Hopefully, we can test for this battery actually, wouldn't it? If it has got any life in it. Nope. That battery out of that tilde one that was sitting down there <coughs> is dead. Confirmed a dead battery. Don't you start that crap with me, Mr. Wong? Get on there. There we go. All it up. And of course, if you were like over in Europe, this would be round the wrong way. Now, if you put this on the driver's side, you'd have your white light pointing backwards, which isn't no good. But you can turn them around. I suppose I could do that at the factory quite easy because it's just one bolt there, look, one nut. So you could rotate the whole fitting around if you needed to, or you could undo the lens. There's just two screws here that hold this clamp on, then you just rotate the lens around. 
Let's just turn those off. It's not the brightest thing on the planet, but you know, if you're parked out in the countryside on a dark, unlit road, or even in a town on an unlit road, I'm guessing they didn't have much in the way of streetlights in towns back then. You know, you're only going to be, I don't know, an hour or so visiting a friend or whatever. You just pop this on the car, it's got a little 6 volt light bulb in it. So you wouldn't use this on a car that's got a 12 volt system, unless you could find a little 12 volt bulb to put in there. Um, I have got a 12 volt version of this actually. Totally different lens to um, style, but yeah, it is a 12 volt version. It's got a 12 volt bulb in it. But I'm assuming the idea is of making it this small was so it didn't drain your battery down. So you could go back to it, you know, the car and start your car. <clears throat> Let's see, in theory, it's at 6 volt. I could actually fix that to one of my bikes and run it from the bicycle dynamo. <laughs> if I really wanted to. You can find these old lights on eBay as well. I think that's actually where I got my other one from. I said it's got a totally different lens design to that. It does the same thing. Um, they're not that expensive, despite you know that they're an old piece of, well, I guess motoring history now. Um, yeah, I think I only paid like a fiver for my other one. I've actually got a red one, well, a one with a red body on it. With just a clear lens on one end, so it's just like it's a front marker light that you can just hook up in the same sort of way. Yeah, I suppose if you had an old motorbike, you could stick that one there as like a little side light, couldn't you? you got a sidecar or something, you just want a marker light on it. As long as the motorbike's a 6 volt system, of course. So, yeah, thanks for those, buddy. Now, on to something completely, actually before we get on to something completely different, we'll just stick with the barricade lamp theme for the moment, because uh, I have seen several nice ones that I wouldn't have minded for my collection as well, on eBay, and I've been going for lots of money. <laughs> I did try bidding on a couple, but got outbid literally within the last two seconds. Um, I did consider putting a higher bid on one of them, but eh. you win some, you lose some. You know, I guess whoever bid against me wanted it more than I did. <laughs> Who? From down to the individual person, really, you know, what they're willing to spend. Some people are willing to spend it. It's like that with uh, most hobbies where collecting is involved. You know, I've seen die cast models where I think, cool. That's a lot of money for a little model, but they do sell. <laughs> so I think, well, they got to be worth it then. You know, if it's sold and someone spent the money, then it's got to be worth it. Anywho, whoops, don't want to turn that on, not yet. So, earlier in the week, I was browsing a local charity shop and I found this big old multifunction torch. It's not the only multifunction torch I've got. I seem to like these because I've got four, five, something like that. Well, probably closer to six or seven if I count the little ones that I've got. I've got a couple of little ones. Um, you know, you could put rechargeable D cells in here as well if you wanted to and charge it up from the external socket there. which is meant to be a 12 volt DC adapter. That's a very big socket on that. I don't even know if I've got a plug that big. But anyway, when I bought or got it home, I knew there was batteries in it because I could tell from the weight of it. And I was hoping, <laughs> um, you know, please don't let them have leaked everywhere. And by the way, I've 
That's the price. John didn't pay a great deal for it. Um, so yeah, you know, just praying and hoping that when I opened up the battery compartment that they hadn't leaked. They'd leaked. And they were Duracells. And three of the six batteries had leaked heavily. However, I did get lucky in the sense that it didn't completely destroy this torch. Um, I have got one of the old batteries at hand somewhere. I did. Where did I put it? There it is. It's hard to find a six volt battery. So there were six Duracells in this torch. Um, the one I've got in my hand has got a best before of March 1996 on it. So that's the best part, 20 years old. Um, another one had a best before of January 1999. And the Ford Duracell Ultras with the built-in battery testers had best before of 20, uh, something 2011, I think it was March 2011. Guess which one's leaked? Have you guessed? If you're thinking that, um, the March 96 one leaked, you'd be wrong. Because it's here. Squeaky clean. I can't show you the other three because I put them in the bin. And they've actually gone outside. I should have held on to them, but in a sense, with how much they'd leaked and how much of it had crystallised and whatnot, and with the cats, I just did not want to keep them around in the flat. Um, but there is photos on my Discord server if anybody wants to see them. Um, if you don't use Discord, just going to throw this out there quickly. If you want me to actually make a Facebook page, maybe. Well, for all my YouTube channels, I'm not, I don't want a separate one for each one. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it for all three. Um, I'm quite happy to do that. Because um, I know not everybody uses Discord. So if it's going to be easier for some for me to set up a Facebook page, let me know and I'll do it that way as well. Anywho. Yeah. Um, it was three um, Duracell Ultras. Or three of the four Duracell Ultras that had leaked heavily. But to my surprise, there was a little bit of that crystallised stuff laying in the bottom of the battery compartment in here. Um, There's some stuck to one of the contact springs, up this end of it. And on this end, I might as well take it off just to show you. There's a very little bit of... Uh, well, you see it's dull on this side. Yeah, there's, this was rather um, furry, for want of a better description. I just took my drill down there with the wire brush. It's the wrong wire brush on it, really. It's too soft. I need one of my um, silver ones, but I can't find one at the minute. So I just cleaned it up as best I could with that gold one. The gold ones are too soft, really, for what I needed it for, anyway. Yeah, that was it. That's all the corrosion there was. There's nothing on the circuit that survived. Um, I've got odd batteries in here at the minute. They say you shouldn't mix your battery brands, but I don't think there's any reason really other than some battery brands are just better than others. So you won't get full performance out of them at your uh, item. Well, there's that risk, you know, that you won't get full performance out of it. Or what if you've got like a torch or something that takes two D cells or double A's or whatever and you've got two different ones in there. There's also the chance that one will go dead before the other. I think that's the only reasons they say don't mix the brands. They're not going to leak or explode or anything like that. But as I can show you, we work. It's not that bright. Um, actually that torch doesn't seem too bad but... The um, JCB barrels I've got in here are not brand spanking new. The um, Amazon ones are. We've got that. We've got the uh, present light on it as well. Got the red flasher. 
Now there's still one minor fault. If I go and put this in sort of a red and amber wigwag. See if I hold the switch down it does something, but if I actually knock the switch not to the off position, I only need to move it a little. There we go. Switch is a bit icky. It works fine the other way to turn the red one on, but it's when I want the wigwag on, it doesn't want to wigwag all the time. One of these big ass torches that was designed for the motorist. Or in the event of a power cut, you know, because you've got that there. But the idea is, you'd sit that on the road, you know, if you've got a flat tyre. You'd run your fluorescent light as well, which has just really dimmed out everything. <laughs> it just shows you how much power that takes. And you'd stand that by your wheel so you've got your light to see what you're doing. And your warning flash is there as well. Or if you've broken down and you can't fix the car, then you just have your flashes on as a warning. You'd stand on the back of the car or something, or a little bit further up the road, something like that. I turned everything off and didn't realise I'd turned the uh, fluorescent back on. I was always fascinated by these uh, torches when I was a kid as well. I bet if I'd actually asked for one as a Christmas gift, I bet Mum and Dad would have actually got me one. But I never did because I didn't think that was the sort of thing a kid would ask for. But I always wanted one. Because <laughs> I just found them so fascinating with all the different functions and things. This is actually in pretty good condition. I just I don't know who made it. There's something written on the end here. Oh. Oh. It's American. Oh, UK design registration, USA patent pending. That is literally all I can find on this. Made in China. Torch, middle is off, then you've got lamp. I'm talking about actually calls it a bloody wigwag. Oh, twin blinker, single blinker, and off. But yeah, that's literally all I can find information. Even when I had this apart earlier to clean it all up, I couldn't find anything in it. No brand, no nothing. Probably one of my favourites now. <laughs> I'm going to see if I get a chance tomorrow. I'll go and get some brand spanking new um, D cells for it. That would actually be handy keeping over in the workshop over at Mum's. It's been out in the countryside, they're more prone to power cuts than I am. It doesn't happen very often here. Well, I suppose I could take that one, or I could take one of the umpteen other ones that I've got. <coughs> I've got a drawer full of torches over here, actually. <laughs> I've got to do a video on updates about the flat as well, because look. Yeah, I keep vacuuming and they keep kicking their bloody cat litter everywhere. Bless their little furry paws. Right, oh, oh. kicking barricade lamps around now. Oh, I'm too high, hang on. That middle drawer somewhere there. That's difficult. Yeah, that one's my battery drawer. That one's my, um, my flashlight drawer. <laughs> you, think, you think I've got enough? Or should I put a few more in there? There's actually a couple of my other multifunction ones in there as well. There's that one, which is literally just a torch and the fluorescent. And it works because I haven't got any batteries in that one. Most of these do not actually have batteries in them. And I've actually got two of these. Simple ones, you know, it's got a prefocal bulb for the torch, which isn't bad. And we just got the bulb there and a the bulb there. That one's just a flash of bulb. I've got another one somewhere around the flat, or it might be in the drawer. I don't know. 
I've got lots of other torches. I've got torches in drawers in the bedroom as well. Old torches. <laughs> Old Ever Ready Torch. I've got a smaller red version of an Ever Ready Torch in here. Little LED stick up light things. I haven't got my batteries in. I know where I'm going to put one of those actually. In my built in cupboard in the bedroom. So I can see what the hell I'm doing in there. Yeah. Firefighter torch in here. Yeah, this one's actually got batteries. Big old Duracell torch, and I've got a smaller one of these as well. Older to um, Duracell torch because it's got the, um, well, I think it's a Krypton bulb in there. Surprised Snowy hasn't come running through yet as I'm clicking all these torch buttons. I've got modern LED torches in here as well. Literally all sorts. So much so that I'm not going to get them all in the drawer. I've got bicycle light in there as well. That's not supposed to be in there. That's all. It's the second, third lamp I've just kicked over. I think I know why the other torches are in the drawer in the bedroom now. I've just thrown them in there. If I actually sort that drawer out and stacked them in properly, I bet I could get them all in there. Right, that is it for the video. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone. If you liked it, thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. And uh, subscribe for more content just like this. As or if you like diecast, you might want to subscribe for that. If you like computers, you might want to subscribe for that. Or you might be interested in model railways. I do a little bit of that as well. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. <laughs> I'm a um, variety channel. That's what I would class this as. Not a very good variety channel, but I'm a variety channel. <laughs> anyway, again, thanks a lot for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.